Hello and welcome to this spontaneous video. So so spontaneous I don't even want to get in the camera. Right, I've always noticed that serendipity is involved. You know, you just about give up on something and then it works. You know, something you've been trying to do, you just about give up and then it like comes through. And so, in a sense, with my YouTube videos, I, um, I'm trying to pretend to give up. <laughs> I give up! I give up! I give up! I do give up, but knowing about the serendipity, I'm wondering. <laughs> so, no, I fucking give up. Um, like my last video, right? There's some good information in there, which I know would... Uh, captivate some people's um, curiosity and they would probably go off and look at look into these haplo groups and stuff like that and you know it's had three views and I'm convinced that YouTube's algorithms have buried it have just buried it and it's not fair, is it? That's not fair. Like, if we can't have a steady platform. Like, I appreciate that people watch videos on YouTube. They want to be entertained. You know, my videos are not entertaining. But for a truth seeker, you know, getting somebody's opinion and I have got some unique positions on things which things I've been saying sounded sound a lot less wacky now than they did when I said them and that's just happening more and more so I don't really mind I kinda know that we're all getting to the truth but I don't think it's fair that you know we had this YouTube platform it should be an equal platform and YouTube algorithms seem to have an agenda and they will bury certain things so certain information doesn't get out and they've got their trolls and their shields to push the agenda they want and also I thought as well like <clears throat> sometimes what they could do is they could put your video in front of people's eyes that they sort of know that they would <laughs> they would hate your video like they could be putting it in front of people who who they know by their trend of what they watch and stuff wouldn't like it rather than putting it out there to people who would I mean, I occasionally use the promoted things, but usually, personally, I'll type stuff and look for stuff. And that's another annoying thing. I've got a lot of... Like, I'm talking about my Faithful Philosopher channel as well. I've got quite a lot of unique titles on videos that I've made that, you know, if you typed into uh, YouTube the entire title that video should come up right and so what doesn't what it doesn't come up and what does come up is other videos that don't have all those words in the title and the video that I know I've made and should be there doesn't come up and also sometimes you know I'll click on my video and it's like an just to test that it works, you know, because I have done that. I have wondered at one point, you know, if they will it work? You know, I haven't checked, so check and it does work, but it, you know, it sounds seems like there's a a delay and the it's retrieving the data from the arse end of you know, the bottom of the pile. I mean I've actually been quite concerned with how much data I'm taking up on YouTube. I appreciate it. it's for free and they're holding 
it's using up data space, you know, sitting there on a server. Um, but I've I've actually been quite sort of respectful of that in a sense. Like I've I've I really, you know, I've really at some point I was thinking I should do a lower definition so that I'm not taking up so much space, you know. So I've thought I thought about it, <laughs> and um, but the main the main reason I've tried to keep my content not repeating myself um, is for the people who've already seen my videos I think that's the fair thing to do but maybe the wrong thing to do because a lot of people say you know you've got to keep repeating yourself to get the message across well I guess I do repeat the main things I do but yeah <coughs> so I give up I give up, all right? I've given up! This is it! I can't be bothered anymore. Um, you know, it, I do it selfishly as well as a sort of video log, but also I've, I've, do, I've noticed when I give advice and stuff, or, or when I come out and I say something new that I've been working on and, you know, it's brand new, it does set me back. It does... It does knock me back a few steps and I have to sort of get going again. I don't absolutely know why that is the case. Um, yeah, but also trying to help people as well. Um, you know, I will then get a couple of days where I'm sort of, you know, I'm sort of feeling inside I've got issues to deal with after trying to help someone. I guess it's sort of fair, isn't it? I'm not saying this is my last video, but if it was, um, <clears throat> then I guess, you know, I should say some of the things that I've been feeling lately in this new world of the soul. <laughs> it's not a new world, is it? It's so, so familiar. So more normal than what I thought was the world, what most people think is the world, is the odd way, it's the, the less um, familiar way. I've got a fly in there, it's God reminding me of his her presence. I just think of flies as female. You don't always know, I suppose. Um, just saying what's coming into my mind. Listen to David Attenborough doing a radio series on the whole, you know, life on Earth from four billion years ago to present day and I've listened to about five of them like the first ones were really interesting and it made me realize you know that even though I believe God created everything and it's all part of God's plan it made me realize that God probably can't can't just make a, like say take Mars as it is right now and then just like boom have it covered in beautiful nature and waterfalls and full of life, you know, all the life you need, like bacteria and blah, blah, blah. you know, because all that early life four billion years ago was needed, like because there wasn't any oxygen like the oxygen has come from life that lived on the planet. So you know, it's not it's not just like oh God could just make another planet, you know, just like that, or God's always just like playing with planets, making them more 
you know, it's serious because if you've got if you've got beings on that planet, whether they're bacteria, single cell organisms or worms or whatever, you know, a life force is needed to pro to to live that life. Something's got to inhabit it to live, otherwise it'd be dead. So God has to be the one to to put God ha it's God's life force goes into these creatures. Now we haven't got God's life force in us. Now how do we know we haven't got God's life force in us? Because I thought about this and in the bath a couple of days ago. You know, I just thought I'd check, you know, am I am I sure I'm not, you know, the life force of God, like, and how do I know I'm not, and stuff like that. And, well, I guess I just know. <laughs> I guess I just know deep down in my heart, because what changed for me five years ago is, you know, really sensing for sure and knowing that there's something bigger than me outside of me that isn't me and that is what I call God but that isn't the source of everything that there is in the universe in the not in the universe but that isn't the source of every of all existence there is more it's a heck of a lot bigger and that, that's a pretty massive one to take on, so I don't want to dwell on that too much. If you haven't gone there, don't worry about it too much, but just make the point. So I differentiate, I've got the one love, the one love, like, who, source of all and everything. And we are obviously part of that one love, our makeup, what we're made of. So I said, um, we were made of, hang on. We were made of love, by love, to love. But we are ourselves an entity. We might be made of love, of love and to love, but we are ourselves an entity. But so is God. So is that force that I recognised outside of me, that bigger entity that is outside of me. And it is male and female. And I feel them separately, yet they are also connected, and as one, they make something a soul, like two hands, two pair, a pair of well-made gloves. You know, there's definitely a difference. There's a right and there's a left. They are not the same. They cannot be. You can't put them on the wrong way around and feel comfortable, or like shoes. You can't walk properly in your shoes on the wrong feet and stuff. But together they're a pair, you know, they'd be kind of use a pair of shoes, a left shoe is, you know, pretty useless without the right shoe, you know, who wants to go and walk around in one shoe, what's the point? So, unless you've only got one leg, of course, but, yeah. Um, so, knowing that, that there is something outside of me, a bigger force, a higher force than me, no deep down and feeling this is a feeling deep down inside of my core and if you feel anything wrong inside of your core you will not be at ease you can only be at ease in the truth in the deepness of your core so I know I am not I do not have God's life force in me the the one whose life force is in all the plants all the bacteria all the little animals and all the animals up until a certain point <coughs> okay I appreciate I'm going through some larger points here some you know all very deep aspects and um, you know if you haven't given them much thought before me spending five seconds on it isn't going to do it justice but I've got lots of videos, that would be boring. You could just think about it yourself. <laughs> okay, so all the animals up until a certain point 
have God's life force in them. And if God had another planet out there without all his children on, and he had, she had grown it, you know, had to start billions of years ago with smaller life forms to be able to create the, the environment for larger animals. And so, um, then, then once your planet is in a situation like it has been for the last hundreds of millions of years, where there's oxygen and trees and all sorts, then, then I'm absolutely sure God could create uh, him, herself, beings, um, any way he or she wanted, to, to, um, for whatever purpose they wanted, and be the life force in those beings. So, you know, who knows what sort of fun God is having on other planets. And if you think about when we, in however many billion years, are ready, and we kind of go into our own universe and start um, putting life on planets and, and experiencing that, I mean, that's something I think about. How do you, how do you be more than one thing? But anyway, we've got <laughs> loads of time to learn about that, haven't we? So, talking back to this planet then. So, back to this planet. To a certain point, all the animals have got the life force of God, and then we've got God's children. Now, say if there's always about seven billion of God's children on the planet, let's just say. <coughs> 300 million years ago, we would have been mainly fish and stuff like that. And, and there would have been probably lots more of them, right? Loads more fish. And um, so, you know, we would have been most of those fish, say, and the, then lower life forms uh, would have been mostly the life force of God. And then you go back even further, a billion years ago or whatever, and we were these other type of creatures and, you know, at some point they wouldn't have been on Earth, we would have been all the creatures they were at the beginning. Like, God wouldn't have needed to have his, her life force in any creatures on the planet because there were enough of us to be all of them. But every time we've moved on, God has taken place of us to keep the li lower life forms going because they're needed. They're needed. So in a sense it shows that, you know, if we were to complain, oh God, why did you make us be those animals? That is rough. But God is prepared to be anything that we've been. And I do think we would have had a very big influence in 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 the looks of the creatures that we were as we went along an evolutionary scale. But obviously every now and then we needed to find this critical um, this critical improvement that was needed, that God knew. God knew eventually we're gonna have to grow legs, say, and walk around. That's gonna be a necessity, part of the plan, right? But God didn't make us do it, you know. We did it, we learned it. Maybe God gave us tips. So, you know, are we heading for something like that now? <laughs> Absolutely, you know. We are going to be using our cores for our, our core, <laughs> for the way we make decisions and, and live our lives. <clears throat> so, I think there was a, another shift, I think a, a sort of a crossing point on, was it June the 19th, 2019, or was it um, 
when that eclipse happened in the southern hemisphere it seemed to be spot on that day around that time at that eclipse and I can't remember the date so I've to something something switched something changed something you know for the better something changed I think um, and this is why I'm worried about making videos I want to touch wood across the fingers and everything but I really feel like my son my son went through a, a change at that point at that point I really feel like it was something so maybe it's everyone or you know because me too in a way I don't know I feel a bit more a little bit more sort of secure, perhaps. <laughs> I don't think I was that insecure before, but but I still get a little bit frustrated about things. That's so natural. Can't be like ooh zen out all the time. I mean, we are you know in the old yearly mood things. You know, we're in our getting into our lower point with men. I mean, we're on an upcoming moon, but our year is coming down still f for men in the Northern Hemisphere until September. But yes, yeah, so one thing I wondered about um, that point, that eclipse point, or the, the 19th of June, is, um, is that when the first human was born who had the life force of God in them. And how would that affect us? Could have quite an effect. And not to say that's going to be like the Messiah, because like I said, just the first one, and then, you know, someone will die and there'll be another kid born with a child of God's soul, but then another child will be born and life force of God will go into that child. And so we'll, we'll see in about seven years' time, there would be millions, millions of kids on this planet who have the life force of God in them. Now what that's going to look like, I would imagine they would just be good you know, in a sense. I think you could still take a dog that's got the life force of God and you could train that dog to do bad things. But you'd have to work at it really hard. Um, so, so I, I don't think, you know, I don't think they'll be perfect. But I think they'll be much more good. And when they start to re reach adulthood, that that would be very interesting. Very interesting. <coughs> I mean, there could already be, like, I don't know. I've thought about that, if there are already. But I'm not sure. I think God's got his beings, his her beings help us and uh, they're the ones who gave us technology of the computer, met Eisenhower in 1950. Just interestingly heard David Icke talking about the moon and um, felt like going to see, definitely. You know, I had a big thing about the moon, what's on the far side of the moon, why has it always got one side facing the earth? You know, they, I think they, there would be people... Or God's beings, God help us, living on there. And maybe even some humans in some sort of secret program, you know. You could have a massive, um, a massive like crevice on the far side of the moon that goes deep down. There could be water, there could be trees. I never know. Anyway. Do I still give up? I give up. What is point? Huh? What is point? What is point me making these videos? Why? Why I make this? Why I talk to you? What do you say to me? You say nothing! No likes! No comments!
I might as well talk to the fly. You know, and that is the thing what I just said about we will be using our core to make our decisions. And it will be where we focus most of our attention and awareness. It will be what's not what's on my mind, what's on my, what's on my heart. What's on my heart right now? And knowing that, you know, if you're sitting down thinking, what the crap am I going to do today? <laughs> you will think, oh, I can do some, I can do some heart work. Knowing that just 20 minutes would just make you feel more happy and at ease. An hour you can have some epiphanies and work some stuff out and understand things a little bit better. For the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. You know, there's something about doing it in this awakened state, in this physical reality. Doing it here, making it your free will choice. There's something about that. It, it, it does affect your genes, right? And that is how we've evolved over billions of years. Because through doing something, you've affected your genes and then you've passed that on. Now, I might not have another child... So I might not necessarily pass it on that way. But in the proximity of people I come to, you know, maybe it, if they, you know, I can change my gene, has an effect on my son already, affects his genes, then he has, makes a baby. <laughs> and the change comes that way. Maybe. <laughs> well, I don't know, evolution is slow and gradual. As it should be. I'm going to be making these genetic snips and changes here and there. And don't worry because they don't last. There are genes within the gene structure that um, will make it revert back to what it was when they fuck about with it. So it's, you know, God's no fool. God hasn't made a mistake. <laughs> Oops! I didn't think of that. That's not going to happen. So I, do I give up on YouTube? Well, yeah I do. I give up on YouTube. Like, I believe they bury my best videos. Ones that would actually help. I mean, if you know, you know, and a couple of people who watched them, who knows if even if they watched them all. I say about five percent of my views have watched the whole video. So you know, when you're looking at videos with less than twenty views, maybe only one person has watched it all. So it's possible that. The information I've been spitting ain't been heard because I've got videos with less than 20 views that I know there's some bloody good information in there. And they're, you know, when they're processing, I'm uploading the video and then they're processing it, you know, it's quite easy for them to. You know, they've got an Alexa engine or whatever. They can read, speed read what I'm saying. And it's like, well, red flag. He's talking about this. We don't want that getting out. Bury that. Um, and I don't help myself either. I mean, fair enough. I don't. I've got Facebook, which I share my videos to. A few hundred contacts on there but um you know yeah I get a few get a couple one <laughs> and one is enough right I heard a good tip actually from someone for uh, trying to 
get my teeth to look a bit better. Um, and she explained it as um, oil pulling. So you can put some, say, coconut oil on your teeth or swish it around in your mouth for a bit. And it pulls some of the toxins and the stains out. And I think it'll take a while for this, especially this bit of fake tooth that's on here that I was told would absorb, absorb more crap. Um, so it could take a while, but I think it might work. I think it's pretty genius. Nice low maintenance. I like that. Give me a low maintenance stuff because I don't want to sit bent over a sink, frothing at the mouth vigorously, scrubbing away, just thinking, you know, what am I doing this for? Like, what's my motivation here? Is it nice, clean, lovely teeth. And that fluoride is going in there. Extinction Rebellion. You know, why now? Part of the establishment, very light on solutions. Want to get their voice heard, but then... They don't have any solutions. What are they saying? I'm trying to get in contact with them. But... I suspect they're linked with the establishment. Perhaps they're just... Uh, trying to get out there and see what's... See what we know. Because they're not mentioning chemtrails. Nothing's being mentioned about chemtrails. Have we got... You know, what else are they putting in with the chemtrails? Because sometimes I feel like they, I, you know, this a certain day and we're breathing in the air and I'm thinking, I'm getting some calming effects of these airs. Like, have they put something in there? You know, I'm feeling a bit nice, right? And then sometimes, you know, the opposite. Or they withdraw it, you know, and then they withdraw it and then you're like... Arr. So, you know, is there some sort of thing in the air at the moment that's just causing apathy? Let's just sail through all these uh, things like... Um, things like HPV vaccines, fluoride in your toothpaste. You know, it's a... Oh, I just... I don't get it. I'm not getting it. I think I'm getting too old. I think I'm... Uh, I'm moving into a different phase. I was thinking earlier, perhaps I've been the white horse, I've been the red horse, and I've just finished being the black horse, and now I'm the pale, sick horse. <laughs> so, the moral of the story is, Keep alert, keep your eyes open, your ears open, speak your truth, be yourself, know yourself, that's your purpose, to know what's character, what is character, why am I different from you? Believe in God, in God's plan. Be with love. And uh, be real. Be genuine. Be yourself. Always. And, um, Use the name of Jesus. Use it in healing. Use it in praying. It's your mother and father. There's power in that name. Isn't there fly? Jesus. <laughs> okay. Ciao.